Hey guys, welcome back. I know it's been a while. Chris and I have been working hard at kind of getting stuff situated. As you can see, we're no longer in the shop. It's a long story, but we'll get to that at the end of this video just so we can get started. We're doing the four link today, so let's just jump straight into it. All right, so the first thing that Chris and I did is we got this live axle up on these saw horses and we got it nice and level across this way. And then we make sure that the nose of the diff is also perfectly parallel to the ground so that way we can get these mounted on at a 90 degree angle and we did that with just having a level and also our angle gauge our angle finder um, this is really important that this is perpendicular to the diff by 90 degrees first thing that we did was we wanted to make sure that before we cut this leaf spring perch off that we had a reference point for the center line. So we lined the laser up in the center of this leaf spring perch, and then we made three dents with our centering punch, so that way we had that reference point. Then we chopped this leaf spring perch off, and then we made sure that we were able to clean up a couple of the areas, so that way our bracket for the new four link setup can go on there nice and neat. And that's what we did over here already. So you can see, We've already burned this in over here and over here. And uh, we got it situated. We put up our level to make sure that it was 90 degrees. And we put up our angle finder as well. And then once that was good to go, tacked it on the inside, both sides, and then burned it in. So now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side and then get the axle underneath the truck and start setting up the rest of the suspension. Okay, cool deal guys. Now that we got our axle on the ground underneath the truck, somewhat positioned where we need it with our wheels bolted on and our pinion angle correct, now we're gonna be doing the fine tuning. And this is a really important part of this process because if we start messing this up, this is our foundation. So if our measurements start off wrong, they're gonna be wrong for the rest of the project and they're gonna compound on each other and we're gonna have a real mess at the end of this. And we don't want that. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing is getting a good reference frame of where everything kind of needs to be unsprung. You'll notice that the truck is on our little handy dandy stands over here. And what this is doing is this is taking out the unevenness of concrete. Because concrete, you can't really trust it all the time. It looks really flat, but it's not always perfectly flat. So we want the frame leveled up in the air and kind of having an ISO center to go off of. So what we did was, Chris and I figured the best possible scenario for us is to have this truck lifted up to what's called our maximum unsprung height. That means this is how high up this is when the coilovers have no weight on them at all and the wheels are about to lift up off the ground. So going from there, we came up to the front of the truck, did the same exact thing, made sure that the front of the truck was perfectly level on our handy dandy stands again. We made sure that there's no weight on the coilovers and no weight on lower control arms and the only weight that there really is is just the weight of the wheel itself with you know the knuckle and the rotor and caliper but other than that there's really just no weight on this wheel at all um, we're doing that so that way when we go ahead and introduce weight back to the vehicle i.e putting on the bed sides putting the fuel cell in filling up the fuel cell getting all the rest of the stuff loaded back up onto the truck tailgate everything once all that stuff's on it's going to naturally compress the suspension and settle and we want all the suspension to settle and compress at the same time and since we have a lot of adjustability on the coilovers and we can come down a lot once the truck settles it'll have a natural rake since we went up this high the rear is going to be probably about an inch and a half to two inches taller than the front and we can go ahead and take out that difference with the coilovers and lower uh, the rear of the truck to where we can have a very minimal to no rake at all. So the front will be pretty level with the back with a full tank of fuel, tailgate, and everything else. Um, as you can see, what Chris and I are gonna be doing at this point forward is we're gonna be drilling our new holes for the lower links. And it just so happens that these links are parallel to the ground, but we don't really care about that. All we really care about is that these lower links are parallel to our upper links when we install those. But it just so happens that they happen to be parallel with the ground. But what we're kind of doing, this is the original mount for where the leaf spring used to go, but since we're not gonna be that high off the ground anymore, we're gonna create a new one. So 
We're gonna measure this carefully on both sides and then we're gonna drill our 5 8 hole and then that's where we're gonna mount with our 5 8 hardware through to the other side and actually get these mounted up. Once these are mounted up in the correct location, Chris and I will begin working on the upper links and then we'll worry about our coilover mounting bar. So let's jump right into it. All right, now that we have our lower links mounted, as you can see, it's quite a bit higher than the factory leaf spring would mount. Uh, now that we have that positioned, Chris and I went ahead and made sure that our front to back was positioned correctly. And how we did that is we drilled really accurate holes and we made these adjustable links the same exact size. And then we shot the laser between, I don't know if you remember, but in the previous episode when we were doing these uh, mini C notches, we used this hole as our centering point. So we shot a laser from this hole to that hole over there and it ran straight across on our axis. So we know we're good front to back. Now we need to verify that we're good side to side. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna come off the face of our wheel right here and we're gonna measure right to the center of that hole. And that is gonna come out to about four inches, roughly four inches, just a hair over four inches or about a hundred and let's see what is that 102 millimeters 102 103 millimeters and then we're going to come over to this other side do the same thing measure off all right as you can see we're just a hair over four inches just like the other side we're going to come back to here and you can see about 102 to 103 millimeters to the center of this hole. So we know that we are side to side, front to back correct. Now we can go ahead and mount our upper links. Okay, so we have our upper link right here. And the way that I've seen some people mount it is like this. And they had it mounted like this with this thing kind of pointing with this end right here pointing down and this end pointing the other way. I don't agree with that. I don't think that's the right way to do things because it's not traveling in the same uh, line on the same axis. You want your suspension to move up. Basically how a four link is supposed to work is this. Your axle is supposed to stay stationary front to back, side to side, but it's supposed to be able to move up and down without changing the pinion angle. You don't want your pinion angle going up and down. You want your diff to remain perfectly flat as it travels up and down. That's why you have a point of rotation, point of rotation, point of rotation, and a point of rotation. You have four points of rotation in a fixed uh, geometry that allows this to travel up and down without doing this. But um, I've seen a lot of people that put these links on and these two ends are facing completely different ways. And that just in my brain doesn't seem like it really works well because if you think about it, when the link travels up, it travels on this axis. But if it's rotated, it's gonna wanna travel on the axis of rotation. So for instance, like say this one's straight and this one's canted, it's gonna wanna travel on this axis it's gonna pull away from the frame versus just going up and down. It's not gonna to wanna to travel this way. It's gonna to wanna to go to that rotation point. So anyway, the way that I'm gonna install this, I don't know if it's 100% right. Some of you suspension experts out there might be able to chime in a little bit, but I'm gonna do it to where this is perfectly parallel to this. They're on the same uh, axis of rotation. I'm gonna have this mounted here to where these are nice and straight with this and Basically, we're gonna be putting a fill plate right here. So there's gonna be a plate that sits inside of here. We're getting some nice root welds inside and right here and in here. And then we're gonna weld this plate to it and position something akin to this. So where this plate's actually welded to the other plate and it's sitting on top of the axle. That way we can get this nice and straight, nice and parallel. These bars will be parallel with these bars and we should have good geometry. So that's what we're gonna work on right now. As many of you guys already know, probably, I'm a huge fan of DeWalt. That's primarily all I have. Um, but sometimes it's not always in the budget to go pick up a DeWalt and Harbor Freight has to come to the rescue and it certainly did in this case. I picked up this Bauer Porta Band with a Milwaukee mild steel blade on it and what a fantastic game changer that has been. 
uh, for weird little situations like this where <clears throat> my mounting bracket is just too short. So I can't get these planes to line up with one another. And I can't make this bracket any shorter because if I make it too short, then I run the risk of uh, the lower link contacting the live axle and I don't want that at all. So instead I just chose to make a new bracket altogether. So I whipped this thing up last night in about 10 minutes and I'm making its brother right now for the other side. But yeah, I mean, sometimes it's cool to praise the cheaper tools. We're looking really good so far. So as you can see, I've already tacked this side up. I had it shimmed a little bit to where it's perfectly level with the back end of that upper link. So these two are uh, congruent in that regard. And now I'm doing the same over here. As you can see, I kind of have it shimmed a little bit with the flathead screwdriver. There's gonna be a little bit of a gap that I have to fill, but that's no big deal. And uh, what I'm gonna do is tack the back side first and then the inside, and then I'll wait till it cools down. And then what I'll do is I'll run the final bead on the outside first. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna shrink the metal so it actually makes the tab bend outwards, which is what I want. So I want the tab to bend as far, I would rather it bend out than in. <clears throat> and then once that's cooled off, I'll go ahead and weld it on the inside. It'll pull back just a little bit, but it won't come fully back because now the backside's fully welded. So I'll have to fight against that. But it's a lot easier when your stuff is further apart than it is together. Uh, so that's the way I'm gonna kind of do that. And then that'll give it a little bit of room to allow this thing to rotate as well. Cause I don't want these things just smashed in there. That's not the point. You still want these things to be able to rotate. So I'm gonna get to doing that right now. All right guys, so I finished mounting the upper links. And as you can see, I put this coilover crossbar in. Well, halfway in right now. I went ahead and burned in this side. Same thing on that side over there. I still need to do the top. Um, on both sides and then I'm gonna reinforce it all the way around but um, I'm gonna wait to reinforce it all the way around because I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop the original fuel cell basket out that I made and then I'm just gonna put it off of this piece right here instead and also I'm gonna build it a little bit differently that way it leaves me a little, with a little bit more space to use like a silicone or neoprene type rubber uh, insulator in between the fuel cell because those aluminum fuel cells man you got to be real careful with them or they can crack split whatever uh, due to vibration and all that so I did think about putting the fuel cell behind the cab but you know what for weight distribution purposes I'm probably just going to go ahead and put it out back but at least it'll be a little bit closer to the axle oh man it is a hot day but um so I think what I'm going to do now is finish welding up the top right there get everything finished up and then paint it all and do a reveal. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and compress the suspension and you'll notice that the pinion angle doesn't change and that's exactly what we wanted. You can see I can literally bounce up and down on the truck and the pinion angle remains exactly the same. So, job well done. Hey dudes, I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. I said I was gonna paint it all up, but I still have a lot of other little small things to do. And if I paint it, I'm just gonna have to grind it back off. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But uh, anyways, you guys get the idea. Um, I've been wanting to get a video out for a while now. Uh, there's no sense in waiting until all this stuff's painted up. And that'll take me probably another day to get all that situated. Um, I mean, it, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's gonna be black, so nothing fancy or anything like that. I still need to clearance the bottom of the old leaf spring hangers down here. So I'll be chopping that off. Same on this side and then um, see what else. Oh yeah, so fuel cell come back here. Um, you already saw the demo of the pinion angle not changing when the suspension was compressed. Uh, I know at the very beginning of the video, I said that I was gonna explain why we're back in the garage. Um, but Chris isn't with me right now. He's in Maui. So he's, he's on his little Hawaiian vacation right now. And, uh, when he gets back, we'll just do a different video or post it in another video. That way we can both kind of explain what happened. But basically it had just to do with thieves. People were about to steal all of our stuff and Chris's Honda, his race car actually ended up getting stolen regardless. So it really sucked, but, uh, it's no biggie. Uh, Amber and I, 
my wife and I were actually building our house and then right after our house is built, I'll be uh, building the shop and all that other stuff. So that will actually have a place that's mine and I'm not paying rent somewhere. Um, the equity will just build on it and everything else. But anyway, guys, uh, that concludes this episode. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.